Rias POV. Akeno and I had arrived at the club room just after dealing with the fallen angels and contacting Yuato. He said he would meet us here, though it may take a bit since he wasn't sure if that girl could come with them through the magic circle. Yufufu, said Akeno, covering her mouth. Still enjoying it, Akeno? I asked, smiling. Of course, Baku. You know how much I love to watch the fear in my enemy's eyes. Their struggling was cute, said Akeno, smiling, brightly, at the thought. Before we could continue, a bright light shined in the room and bright red magic circle appeared, ISE and the others coming through it. The magic circle didn't have the grammary mark that it would normally have to enter this place. He must have used his own. We're back, Baku, said Issei, carrying the blonde girl from the other night. She was wearing nothing but a semi-transparent white camisole and looked to be asleep. Issei had a relieved expression on his face and he, Yuato, and Konako were free of any visible wounds. I was relieved for that, at least. Welcome back, ISE. I can see it went well, said Akeno, smiling. I can see the same for you, said Issei before laying the girl down on one of the sofas. What's wrong with her? She seems to be fine but she shouldn't be sleeping like that after just being saved, I said, curious. We're unsure if she underwent some kind of strenuous preparations. ISE Kun thinks they tortured beforehand so she was too weak to resist the ceremony. She passed out right after Konako and I arrived, said Yuato, calmly. Hmm, I guess we'll have to wait until she wakes up. I was hoping we could make her a servant tonight, I said, dismayed. That won't be a problem, said Issei, closing his eyes as he moved his hands over the girl. I was about to ask what he was doing before a glowing white light came out of his hands. I, in the past years, could never get better as a support type. The most I can do is use my sacred gear to give boosts to others' power and use key to speed up the healing process and restore stamina. Right now, she's drained, so I'm going to use key to restore her energy. She'll still need to rest, but at least she will be able to show you her twilight healing. Another thing I didn't know about. After a minute or so, the girl stirred in her sleep and then her eyes cracked open. Her eyes fluttered wide open and she looked around, probably confused, but also looking a little relieved. Maybe she was relieved to be with Issei? Ise san did I fall asleep, asked the girl, sitting up, slowly. Just for a little. You were exhausted, but I restored a little bit of your stamina, said Issei before leaning in. He whispered something to her that I couldn't hear and she nodded before looking to me. You um, hello. I am Asia Argento. Nice to meet you, said the girl I now knew to be Asia. Hello there, I began, smiling at her with a welcoming smile. My name is Rias Gremory, your friend Issei's master. Why yes, Ise San has told me. You need to see my power before you can make me into your servant as, right, said Asia, surprising me a bit. Asia, you do realize that you would be becoming a devil, right? You will not be able to go back and you won't be able to pray or communicate with God anymore, I explained. I I know, but I want to be with Ise San and Ise San is with you. I never want to leave Ise San's side said Asia, smiling brightly at Issei. So she feels that way about him? I wonder how he feels. I shook my head to chase away the thoughts. Well, all right. None of us have anything to heal, though, I began, wondering what to do. I don't want any of my servants to be hurt just to show off her powers. That's fine, said Issei before coating his right hand in key. The key looked jagged along the edges and he quickly swiped at his left hand, a hiss escaping through his teeth. Ise San. Issei. Asia and I shouted in unison. Honestly, this servant. Hurting himself like that. It's fine. Asia, this isn't much compared to what you've healed before, said Issei, smiling at her. She pouted at him and held her hands over his wounded hand. Her hands glowed in a green light and she closed her eyes. I watched as the wound on Issei's hand slowly closed, the ends healing first and moving towards the center. After less than a minute, the wound was completely healed and he showed it off to me, grinning. I sighed at how idiotic that smile was but had to agree. Such an effective healing power would be a great asset to us. All right, I'll take Asia under my wing, I said, defeated by my precious pawn. Asia, come over here. Yes, said Asia, getting up and walking over to me. She stood in front of me, adjusting her clothes, and smiled at me. Now then, I said, slamming my only other bishop piece on the desk. You will be reincarnated using this bishop piece. 
Respond when I signal you to. Asia nodded and I picked up the piece again. Asia Argento, I, Rias Gramary, will use my authority as king to reincarnate you into my bishop. Do you accept this? I said before gesturing to Asia. She responded with a simple yes and I continued. Then, by the power granted to me, I will make you my demon slave. I grant you a new life as a devil, may you serve me well. As I said that last line, I placed the bishop piece against her chest and it was absorbed into her, a glowing red light flashing before settling down. She sighed in relief and smiled at me. Thank you, Rias Baku, said Asia, happily. I smiled at her but couldn't help feeling that she was too formal. Asia, that sounds a bit too formal. Please just call me, Onisama, I said, liking the way that sounded. Yes. Rias Onisama, said Asia, even more happily than before. I'm not sure why, but hearing her say that gave me a warm feeling in my heart. I wonder why? Could Asia stay here for tonight? Until we can figure out where she can stay, asked Issei, smiling over at us. She can come to my Anakeno's apartment. I'll think of some things we could try and we can figure it out in the morning. Thank you Yuato, Konako, for your help. Rest well, I said, smiling over at my two servants. Kiba and Konako nodded before leaving, Issei giving Asia a quick hug before waving us goodbye and leaving himself. Afterward, Asia, Akeno, and I went back to our apartment and I went to sleep that night wondering what exactly to do about Asia. The next day. Eh? My house, said Issei, sounding less surprised about my suggestion than he should have. We were currently standing just a house down from Issei's, speaking over here so that his parents did catch wind of anything until we went over. Yes. You already have Yumi and Valerie living in a separate space in the area where the spare room is, right? Well, in reality, that room is empty and unused. I'm sure your parents wouldn't mind having a cute girl in the house, I said, smiling as I patted Asia on the head. That would work. My parents have mentioned in the past about wondering what it would have been like to have a daughter, said Issei, looking over at Asia. I guess let's try it. Are you going to transport her things over after we set everything up? Already done, I said as I started walking towards his home. He looked at me confused but I just smiled at him until we were in front of his house. There in front of his door were several boxes, all marked with the Gremory seal. You work fast, said Issei. Only the best for my cute servants, I said, winking at him. Now, then, are you going to invite us in? Ah, sorry, said Issei, looking cute as he became a bit flustered. He went and opened the front gate and then the front door, holding it open for us as he gestured us inside. Mom. Dad. We have visitors. We're over in the sitting room, Issei, said a woman's voice. I assume that is his mother. We walked through the house, following Issei, and he led us into an open room. There was a man, his father I assumed, sitting on the sofa sipping some coffee and putting the newspaper he was reading down on the table. His mother was standing in front of what looked like the entrance to the kitchen and was wearing an apron. When we came into view, Issei's parents looked at us in surprise. FFF father. Our Issei has brought home such pretty girls, said his mother, shocked. MM mother. They look like foreigners. Our son has brought home foreigners, said his father, sounding equally as shocked. Hello father, mother, I said, bowing to them. H hello, said Asia, sounding nervous, as she copied my bow. Oi, didn't I bring home girls just the other day, asked Issei, sounding annoyed. I couldn't help but giggle. Yes, but you practically grew up with Akeno Chan and that other girl looked so young, said Issei's father. These two are Bishaojo that a father can be proud of. Dear, said Issei's mother, threateningly. Please do not speak in such a way in front of our guests. Issei's father squeaked out a yes and promptly sipped some of his coffee in silence. Now, what brings you two here today, said Issei's mother, smiling over at us. Well you see. I began before telling them of the situation at hand. Of course, I worked in a bit of magic to making them a bit more interested in making Asia a part of their household. Yeah, <laughs> shouted both Issei's parents at the same time. Why you, Asia-san, you would want to live in this household, said Issei's father. S surely there must be another house. I mean, you would be living under the same roof as our boy, Issei, said his mother. Yeah, well, Is san has helped me a lot in the past so when I thought of a place to stay, I could only imagine being with Ise-san, said Asia, smiling. 
Ah. But if it is too much then. W well, we didn't say no, it's just. Began East Say's mother. Yes, it's just, even though our son has taken up an interest in martial arts, he's always had a high libido and he's quite the pervert. Would you be okay with living with someone like that, said his father, almost making me giggle. His parents didn't know how to hold back. Oi, oi. Is that any way to talk about your son, especially when he's right here, said East Say, sounding hurt. His parents just waved him off, waiting for Asia's response. That part of ISE San doesn't really bother me, though. Said Asia, looking away, innocently. Maybe I should jump in. Well, why don't we include training on how to become a good Japanese wife? I said, smiling. W wife, shouted his parents in shock. D darling. I didn't think there was a girl alive who would think of marrying our perverted, muscle-head son, said his father, practically in tears. I thought the same thing, shouted his mother, also in tears. Our son is unworthy of such a sweet, pretty girl. Hey, shouted Issei, annoyed. Father, mother, Ise San isn't unworthy. He's an amazing person, said Asia, sternly. Issei's parents were actually crying in happiness now and I had to suppress my desire to sigh. They reminded me of my own father, it brought unpleasant memories for the future. Yes. We want to take Asia San in. We'll take her in and make her an amazing wife, said Issei's mother. Not we want to, please allow us to take her in, shouted his father, looking like he was ready to bow on the ground. Thank you very much, father, mother, I said, both of them shouting in glee. I looked at Issei and winked at him, receiving a sigh in response. What a cute servant I have. Issei POV. It's been about a week and a half since Asia Chan was reincarnated into a devil. She's fit back in with my parents nicely and it reminds me of the old times. In this past time, Rias had introduced us to Sonokaiku and the other members of the student council. After that Rias and Sonokaiku had had a duel over whose servants were going to get a familiar. Since I already have Kurika, I didn't put much focus on what was happening but Asia Chan was. After all, this was when she made her contract with Rasiai. That annoying little sprite dragon still zaps me whenever I'm around. Right now. I'm laying on my bed after failing to get another contract. That part hasn't changed at all. I get so distracted with the clients that I forget to ask about making the contract. Honestly, I'll never learn. While laying on my bed, I felt magic in the air and jumped off my bed before a grammary magic circle appeared on the ground. Ah, yeah, I almost forgot about this event. Out of the magic circle appeared Rias. Bukha. I asked in mock confusion. She silently turned off the lights and threw herself at me, her soft breasts pressing against my chest. Issei, make love to me, she shouted, surprising me. Did she look so passionate before? Um, okay. I said, voice my surprise. Please, take my chastity, she said as she began unbuttoning her clothes. I sat there, very aroused by the sight. To Sirius doing this again. Ahh it's been so long since I've seen her naked body. Since I was never injured by the fallen angels, she never had to sleep with me so I haven't seen her beautiful body since before the incident. You look happy. I'm glad. This is my first time so please be gentle. Rias straddled me in her underwear before moving to take off her bra. I couldn't help but be even more aroused now, excited by the situation. Knowing I won't be able to do anything, though, is so frustrating. Do you, not have experience, asked Rias, probably at my lack of moving. I shook my head and she smiled. Well, that makes me slightly more comfortable. Bibuko, are you alright with me? I asked, killing time until Grafia San interrupts us. Although there are still some issues to deal with, you are the only man I'd want to do something like this with, she replied, her bra now off. She took my hand and pressed it into her firm yet soft bust and I was screaming in my head. Now, Issei, please take me quickly. Yuga. Rias, stop, or else I'll really do it. I could slow Grafia San down by blocking her teleport long enough for us to do it. Please stop tempting me so much. Issei. She breathed as she brought her face close to mine. As I anticipated the kiss, Grafia San finally interrupted us. She appeared out of a gray magic circle with Sertsk's summer seal on it. I almost forgot what that disappointed expression of hers looked like. Sigh it looks like I was too late. Forgive me for stopping it like this, Issei, said Rias, glaring over at Grafia-san. 
The master inserts Ksama would be disappointed to see you in such a state, said Grafia San, annoyed. My body is my own. I can give to whomever I please, said Rias as she got off my lap. And another thing, do not speak as though doing such a thing with my servant is negative. I won't allow anyone to mock my servants. Grafia San was silent for a moment and she turned to pick up Rias' dress shirt. You are the heiress to the Gremory clan. Please exercise some discretion, she said as she put Rias' shirt over her shoulders. She then turned to me and smiled. A pleasure to finally meet you. My name is Grafia and I am a mate of the Gremory clan. I am also the queen of her brother. It is nice to meet you as well. Please give Musama my regards, I said, bowing a bit. You seem well informed, said Grafia San, looking at me with a sly expression. So this is the one you mentioned? He has the power of the dragon coursing through his body but I feel less power than a human would normally have. He's suppressing his power quite well. Yes, he is my precious servant after all, said Rias before coming close to me. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Ace say. I would say to just forget about this, but I don't think either of us could. She kissed me on the cheek and I held that cheek after she moved back. Rias smiled at me before frowning and turning towards Grafia San. We shall be leaving now. Thank you for your cooperation, said Grafia San before she and Rias disappeared in a magic circle. I stared off to where they had just been inside. Rias looked just as frustrated and sad as she did before. I have to save her again and beat that idiot Razor. The next day. Grafia San. I said in mock surprise as I walked into the club room. I came in to find everyone there in the club room, Asia and Keeble looking like they had walked in just before I did. Everyone's finally here, said Rias, getting up. Mistress, I can explain Dash, began Grafia San before Rias put up a silencing hand. You see Dash, began Rias against before being interrupted by a glowing light. A large, flaming magic circle appeared in the open area of the room and I gritted my teeth. Although I came to like Razor after he had changed, the way he was before we fought was exactly the type of guy I hate. Razor appeared out of the magic circle which then disappeared along with the flames and he cracked his neck before rolling it around. Ahh, it's been so long since I've been to the human world, said Razor, sounding annoyed. He turned, grinning. It's been a while, my darling Rias. Everyone, this is Razor Phoenix Sama. He is a pure blood high class devil from the Phoenix clan as well as its heir. He is also, the fiancé of your master, explained Grafia San, causing me to glare. I won't let anyone except me have that title. Rias is my love. Some of the others seemed to be annoyed by him too since they glared at him as he found a place to sit, lounging as he looked over at Akeno. She seemed to have taken the unspoken hint and came back a few minutes later with tea, all of us remaining mostly silent as we waited. Ah, Rias Queen's tea is always delicious, said Razor after sipping the tea. He beckoned Rias over and she, reluctantly, complied. The pleasure is mine, said Akeno, her tone becoming annoyed when Razor put his arm around Rias' shoulders. Razor began to play with Rias' hair and placed his hand on her thigh after setting his tea down. Before I could snap at him, Rias stood up, annoyed. That's enough. Razor, I've already told you I have no intention of marrying you, said Rias, angrily. Come now, Rias. Your family can't cater to your selfish desires forever, said Razor, smugly. Who I marry will be my choice, said Rias. After the last war, the number of pure-blooded devils decreased dramatically. This has had a great impact on devil kind. Your father and Sertsk took this into account before deciding on our engagement, said Razor. My family is too panicked about bloodlines. I will marry who I want, said Rias before Razor suddenly rose up and caught her chin in his hand, pulling her face close to his. Listen Rias, I am the important heir of the Phoenix clan. I will not lose face, said Razor before turning his eyes towards us. Even if I have to burn everything keeping you here to a crisp. My expression was no longer calm since he was threatening and harassing Rias as well as my comrades. I let some of my energy leak as I glared at him, looking straight into his eyes. I could see Grafia San tense up and she got in between us. Please cease this childishness. Razor Sama, mistress, I am here to watch over things by order of Sertsk Sama. I will not allow you to do something reckless. My masters foresaw you two quarreling and, should the situation become dire, I am to initiate a resolution said Grafia San. I squinted my eyes and she glared at me a bit, knowing that I knew what she was going to say. Resolution, 
said Rias, confused. My masters have instructed me to set up a rating game between you two that will settle this once and for all, said Grafia San, causing Kiba to gasp in real surprise while Akeno and Asia gasped in mock surprise. I've much experience in rating games. I've won many of them, too. Although it seems a bit unfair considering you not only lack experience but also lack a full house, I wouldn't mind settling it this way, said Razor. We're at a total disadvantage if this happens, said Kiba, sounding frustrated. I have my full house. Does that frighten you, Rias, said Razor, mockingly. It doesn't matter, we'll still kick his ass, I said in response to Kiba's comment. Oh? Some low-level, shit of a devil dares to say that, said Razor, glaring at me. Don't test me, I said, leaking out more power than before. That's enough, Issei. I don't want you causing a scene, said Rias, causing me to, reluctantly, hide my power again. He's a wild one. I look forward to crushing him right in front of you, Rias. Until the raiding game, then, said Razor before opening a magic circle. He looked over at me with a smug grin on his face before disappearing through it and I growled in annoyance. Issei, said Rias, sounding annoyed. You cannot challenge high-class devils like that. It will cause problems for me later on. Sorry, I said, dryly. Is this all right, said Grafia San, calmly. The date for the raiding game will be 10 days from today. I plan to inform Razor Sama afterward. Considering your strengths from what I am familiar with, it will be near impossible. You don't know about Issei's strength. The only issue is the rest. Issei aside, none of my servants have serious experience in fighting, let alone some much stronger than they are, said Rias, drifting off in thought. That's not a problem, I said, simply. She and Grafia San looked at me with confused expressions and I grinned. Training time. Rias just smiled at me while Grafia San looked skeptical. All right. Training it is, said Rias. The next day. All right everyone, let's start, I said as everyone except Rias stood across from me. Rias stood behind me and I could feel her eyes watching me closely. We were at one of Rias' homes in the middle of a mountainous forest and Rias had put me in charge of training since I had been so confident in the idea. Today, I'm going to start with Kiba, I began before manifesting Ascalon. The rest of you can watch or do your own personal training until I finish with him. Including today we've got 10 days but if we want to leave a day for rest, it means we've only got 9. Don't slack off and training will go well. Everyone nodded and moved to the sidelines to watch while Kiba and I prepared our stances. Kiba, fight me seriously, like you're going for the kill, I said, seriously. Kiba looked at me, surprised, but nodded. I glanced over at Rias who gave us the signal to begin and Kiba came running at me. I blocked his first sword strike and then parried it off to the side. Kiba let go of that sword and created another, slashing at me while my arms were off to the side. I slipped past the swing and brought Ascalon in to hit him and stopped just before slicing at his back. He surrendered, realizing he was beaten and I nodded. Seems I lost this bout. We were more even before, though, said Kiba, wondering what had changed. I didn't use my full power before. Not even now. Although you're on PAR with me when it comes to sword techniques, I'm stronger than you so I can pull off maneuvers normal swordsmen wouldn't be able to pull off. That aside, Kiba, your biggest problem is you're not using the versatility of your sword effects. You can make elemental swords, right? Why didn't you make one and try using the effects on me? Since your swords don't have many signs as to what they can do, you could surprise your opponents and get the upper hand, I explained. Keeble looked at his sword, looking like he was interested in the idea and I continued. Here's an example. If you created a sword that could blow up, then that sword you left behind could have been a powerful weapon. I looped past that sword on my way to your rear for an attack. If that sword could blow up, you could have done that while I passed it and done a lot of damage. Another thing you could have done is create a sword that could somehow extend. If it had, you could have still slashed me when I dodged your sword since I just went out of range of your sword as opposed to dodging the sword completely. Sneak attacks and leading your opponent around are important when fighting guys stronger than you. Talk to Yumi about it. Her whole thing is being stealthy and sneaking around. She can help you more with it. Thank you, ISE Kun. That's a lot to think about, said Kiba, looking at his swords with interest. I grinned a bit as I watched him and Yumi walk away from the group and looked over everyone. Asia, I don't have anything to teach you. 
Just work on getting closer with Rassii. He could help protect you while you're healing, I said, simply. Yes, said Asia before leaving to summon Rassii. Akeno, you already know what I'm going to tell you, I said, simply. Yes, I know, ISE. I should work on using those powers. Correct, said Akeno. I smiled. That, yes, but you should also practice keeping track of those around you. You've had a nasty habit of getting too distracted and getting hit from behind, I said, causing Akeno to blush. Arera, ISE is being such a bully. Today he's being the S. Well, I'll take ISE's advice and work hard, said Akeno before moving off. All right, now, Konako-chan, I said, causing Konako-chan to walk forward. What is Senpai going to teach me, asked Konako-chan, curious. I'm going to spend the rest of the teaching key manipulation, I said, simply. Konako-chan seemed a bit surprised by this but Rias was even more so. Issei. I told you Konako-chan is sensitive about that. She isn't ready dash, began Rias before I cut her off. Konako-chan's biggest fear has been going out of control and doing what her sister did, right? I said, receiving a nod from Rias. Well, I've already shown her that I know how to suppress her key. We'll start with the basics and move forward from that. If she doesn't like it, we'll stop. She's not going to be able to get much stronger unless she starts using her Nico Shao powers so you might as well just let her. Sci fine. Just be careful, you, too. I'll go and help Akeno with her training, said Rias before wandering off. Ise Senpai, are you sure you want to teach me, said Konako-chan. Yeah. I told your sister I'd take care of you so I might as well teach you. You still remember stuff from when Kurika started to teach you before right? I asked. Yes, but Naysama didn't take it seriously, said Konako-chan, looking annoyed. Ah, Kurika. You really need to take your little sister seriously. I might have to talk to her about it. Well, who know when that will be with her working hard with Volley and the others. I guess let's start with going into Nikomata mode. I can only really teach you Senjutsu since I can't use Yujitsu, though. I think Senjutsu will be enough for now, I began while Konako-chan built up key inside her body. Her cat ears and tail popped out and she waited, patiently, as I thought about how to begin. So, to begin with. It's been a couple days of training now and I had wandered out late at night to get some fresh air. Everything had been going well so far with everyone's training. Kiba and Asia have been progressing very quickly since they're just relearning what they already know. Kiba's been frustrated but he's improving, too. It was exhausting, though, for an idiot like me. I've always been the trainee, not the trainer. I hope I don't make any kind of serious mistakes. I glanced up at the stars inside. The big, marble gazebo I was sitting in didn't have a hole in the top so it blocked part of the view. At least the sounds of the fountain are soothing. Issei, called a voice from off to the side. I glanced over and saw Rias, dressed in a nightgown and glasses while holding a book. Bukha. I said, curious. I came out to get some fresh air. I wasn't expecting to find you here at this time, said Rias, smiling at me. She came over and sat against a pillar across from me and opened her book. Me neither. I just wanted to relax. That book? I asked, curious. It's a plan I had written up. I've been reviewing it again and again but I'm still nervous and not very confident, said Rias, chuckling a bit. You shouldn't be. You're too amazing to feel anything but confident, I said, smiling at her. She looked surprised by that line and smiled back before turning to the book. I have confidence in you at least, but, who's to say that means we can win? After all, the enemy is a phoenix. Strong, regenerative, not to mention he's not an idiot. The second he realizes just how strong you are, he'll just come to get me. Once the king is down, we lose, said Rias, looking away, somberly. Buck -huh, I said, seriously, as I scooted over to her side. I swear I won't let you marry that bastard. Even if I'd have to crash the wedding by myself. Rias looked over at me and I looked eyes with her, showing how serious I was. Even when I was weaker than weak, I did that. I would no doubt do it again. Honestly, you're such a hard-headed servant, she said, blushing and looking away. Too bad you're stuck with me, huh? I said, grinning. Idiot, muttered Rias before hopping to her feet. Anyways, the others are going to need your guidance, Issei-sensei. Don't go to bed too late. Got it, Bakut, I said, 
giving a thumbs up. She smiled and walked back towards the villa. Some days later. It's finally time for the raiding game. We all were transported to a location that looked exactly like the club room and I was already on alert. Everyone, I am Grafia, servant of the Gremory household and appointed judge between the Gremory and Phoenix families. Taking into account Rias Sama's and Razor Sama's preferences, we decided to make the field an exact replica of Kyuah Academy. Both parties have been teleported to their main bases, Rias Sama's being the occult research club's base, the old schoolhouse and Razor Sama's being the principal's office in the new schoolhouse. Let the game begin. Once Grafia San's announcements had been made, we all looked towards Rias. She released a bunch of small, red lights from her hand and each floated to one of us. These will act as our communication devices. Keep in touch and listen for commands. East say, I want you to start off with making your way to the new schoolhouse however you can. Don't get caught. If you do, defeat the enemy and rendezvous with one of the others. If we can't get them with a sneak attack, I don't want to take unnecessary risks. Until we whittle down their forces, it's dangerous for me and our base to try and go for their main base, explained Rias. I nodded and turned to make my way outside. Good luck everyone. Third person POV. After receiving orders from Rias, everyone spread out from the clubhouse, Asia staying behind. Issei began to move along a path near the edge of the field, trying to move as close to the enemy base. Konako and Kiba moved out together, Konako releasing her familiar to scout ahead, though she already knew how the enemy was going to proceed. Akeno did the same with her own familiar and waited. After her familiar returned, she contacted Rias to let her know everything was relatively clear. Konako and Kiba split up before reaching the gym and Konako slipped in. We know you're here, Gremory servants, said a woman's voice as the lights in the gym turned on. Konako walked out into the light, no point in continuing to hide, and moved into a fighting stance. The Rook, huh? And you're all alone, how sad, said one of Razor's servants. I'm Myra, a pawn, said a girl holding a staff. I'm Swollen, a Rook, said the girl who spoke before. She was dressed in a Chinese dress. I'm Ayel, a pawn, said a short, green-haired girl. And I'm Nell, also a pawn, said a girl who looked identical to the other girl. A rook and three pawns, said Konako as she raised her aura. Her cat ears and tail came out as she looked between them. You, Swollen, are strong, probably as much as a queen. I can't hold back. Ha ha ha. We're going to destroy you, you little kitten, said Swollen, moving into a fighting stance. Ise Senpai, I will put your training to the test, now, said Konako to herself before coating her fists in key. She leapt out at Swollen, ready to punch, but Myra leapt out in front, her staff ready to block. Konako punched forward, ignoring the staff, and broke it in half. Myra had a shocked expression as the punch broke her prized weapon but she didn't have time to react before Konako's punch hit her in the gut. The key significantly increased the force of her punch and it launched Myra back, slamming her into Swollen and into the wall of the gym. Ayel and Nell looked surprised but didn't waste any time pulling out their chainsaws and attempting to slash at Konako. We're gonna cut you up, shouted both girls in sync as they slashed. Konako dodged the attack, though it cut through her clothing, revealing her bra and panties. She looked down, a bit embarrassed, but continued on. The twins continued to slash at Konako and she eventually became annoyed before kicking the side of one of the chainsaws, launching it towards the other. The chainsaws crashed together and jammed up on each other, both spewing out smoke as they broke. Ah! How could you, shouted Ayel. These are our favorite weapons, shouted Nell, both angry. Strike out, said Konako, calmly, as she threw a strong punch at the ground in front of the twins. The ground blasted out chunks of rock, smashing into the twins and knocking them both out. Razor Sama's two pawns have retired. Two down, two to go, said Konako to herself preparing for Myra and Swollen to rejoin the fight. Swollen was the first to come out from the rubble of the destroyed wall she had been launched into and Myra soon followed, though she was much more injured. That hurt, damn it, said Myra, angrily. You're stronger than I expected, Rook of Gremory. I'll enjoy beating you down, said Swollen before launching herself towards Konako. She ignited her right foot and aimed a kick at Konako, the kick being easily caught by Konako. Huh. Bye, bye said Konako, smiling as she spun around and threw Swollen at Myra. Myra cried out a profanity or two as Swollen smashed into her already injured abdomen and the two were again smashed into a wall. 
This time, though, they weren't getting up. Razor Sama's rook and pawn have retired. Arera, said a voice as someone approached. Konako turned and found Akeno to be flying in and released her cat ears and tail. You managed to wipe them all out by yourself. You've gotten strong with some of Issei's training, huh? Ise Senpai is a good teacher, said Konako, calmly. M.M., began Akeno. She held her hand up to her ear and looked through the opening Konako had created in the wall of the gym. Rias, Konako-chan has secured the gym. What should we do now? Meanwhile, while Konako was defeating those in the gym, Issei was still moving through the field, hiding amongst the trees in a small forested area on the school campus. Kiba was to stay relatively close to the base and deal with any trespassers but Issei was planning to deal with the group that was going to come through here before they could get any closer. My my, what is this lonely guy doing out here, said a girl as Issei came into her view. Issei stopped and grinned. Hi there, my name is Shlia, a pawn, said one of the girls. I'm Marion. I'm also a pawn. And I'm Bulent, a pawn. Sorry, pretty girls, but I'm going to have to defeat you, said Issei, as he moved into a fighting stance. Hee <laughs> hee, even if you could get past us, Razor Sama already know about you. Any surprise attack you were planning has failed, said Shlia. Issei frowned and put a hand to his ear. Bukho, I've run into three pawns that were probably going to try a sneak attack. I'll deal with them and follow the plan, said Issei, receiving an alright in response. I'll deal with you quickly. You're too confident, weakling, said Bulent before raising her hand. She shot off a powerful beam of magic and Issei slapped it away with his bare hand, not even bothering to cover it in key. Bulent was surprised by this, as were the other two, and they all prepared for a fight. Razor Sama's two pawns have retired. Ah, Konako-chan is doing well, I guess, said Issei before launching himself forward. He covered his fists in a fiery key and launched a fist forward just in front of each of them. He moved fast enough that they couldn't react and the blast of fiery key put them all out of commission. Razor Sama's three pawns have retired. Now that's done, began Issei to himself. I'll return back now. Razor might send forces to attack the main base. So you and Konako are alright then, asked Rias after receiving a transmission from Makeno. Alright, good. Issei dealt with three pawns just before Konako finished off her last two so things are going well. He's coming back to base and should be here in a few minutes. You two should try to hold the gym for now. Um, Riasoni sama don't you think it's suspicious that the queen hasn't been run into, yet, asked Asia. I was thinking the same. No one has called in with anything and Yuato said it's all quiet around the base. I had a Keno set up traps all around so it won't be easy to get close, began Rias before drifting off. What are you planning, Razor? Bukho, said Issei through the communication device. I'm sensing a strong power near where the gym is. Konako-chan and Akeno should be careful. Akeno, Konako, did you hear that? asked Rias, receiving yes in response. If the queen shows up, we're going to have to move out into all-out attack. Especially if we lose the gym as a checkpoint. I, I think we can win, Rias Onisama, said Asia a confident look in her eyes. I hope so. Muttered Rias to herself, worry on her face. Issei had just arrived in an open area in front of the club room and he looked out towards the gym where he had felt that power from before. He used his key to pinpoint it and saw a glowing light very high in the sky. It wasn't very noticeable because it blended in with the strange sky of the space where the field was but Issei could tell they were about to launch an attack. Before he could do anything, though, they launched an enormous blast of orange energy down on the gym, causing a massive explosion. Issei. What was that? asked Rias through the communication device. Their queen was that power I felt. They just destroyed the gym. I'm going, Baku, said Issei before sprinting forward. I'll protect Baku and Asia, so don't worry, Ise Khan, said Kiba through the communication device. Roger that, said Issei as he continued onward. He reached the remains of the gym after a couple minutes of running at full speed and found the dust finally clearing. Akeno was within a glowing sphere of electricity, the same defense she used against Issei's breath attack when they fought in his separate space. Akeno. Where's Konako-chan? asked Issei, worried. I'm not sure. The blast surprised me. I didn't think the queen would attack us both at the same time, said Akeno as she released her barrier. 
The two heard some rustling in the rubble nearby and Issei pulled a large part of the roof of the gym off the ground to find a battered Konako. Konako-chan, said Issei, throwing the piece of rubble away. Sorry, senpai. My key isn't strong enough yet so I took a lot of damage, said Konako. Issei looked her over and found that her right arm was broken, her clothes were either destroyed in some parts or covered in blood in others. We'll have to get you to Asia. She can get you back to normal, said Issei as he picked her up bridal style. Konako blushed a bit, but winced as her broken arm was jostled. Bukho, I'm bringing Konako-chan back. The gym's been destroyed and she's injured, said Issei. Rias, I think I'll take some revenge for our cow Urhe, all right, said Akeno, sounding annoyed. Be careful, Akeno. Razor's queen isn't weak, said Rias. Issei, Asia is ready to help. Hurry before Razor's other servants start to attack. Yes, Bakho, said Issei before leaving to return Konako to the clubhouse. Akeno, on the other hand, was releasing her aura, annoyed that someone had hurt one of her precious cow Urhe and remembering how Konako had been defeated the same way in the previous timeline. I've always wanted to try fighting you, Priestess of Lightning, said Razor's queen, smiling down on Akeno. Akeno began flying up, releasing more of her electric, yellow aura, and grinned at the enemy queen. Era era, I'm honored, Razor's queen. I hope you are not too confident, though. I've been told that I'm pretty strong, Yufufu, said Akeno, her tone condescending. TCH, I hope you are ready for me, said Razor's queen before pointing her staff at Akeno and releasing a blast of demonic energy. Akeno flew around to dodge it and began to release electricity from her hands. And now, combined with light, said Akeno before light mixed with the electricity, creating lightning. So I get to see your half-breed power? Interesting. I wonder if it's strong enough to take me down, said Razor's queen, confidently. You won't last long if it hits you. Dodge it if you can, said Akeno, giggling to herself. Akeno launched a bolt of lightning at Razor's queen and she dodged it before firing off another beam of energy. Akeno blocked it with a defensive magic circle before shooting off a few bolts of lightning. Razor's queen tried to block it with a large magic circle but it wore down quickly and she was hit by one of the bolts, eliciting a scream of pain. Yufufu, you have such pretty screams. Grr, I'll kill you, said Razor's queen, angrily. This time, she formed a different kind of magic circle and fired several elemental spells at Akeno. Akeno created her electric barrier and the spells bounced off it. She released the barrier and, this time, flew up close before grabbing Razor's queen by the wrist. Seems it's over now, said Akeno, grinning. Razor's queen's eyes widened but she didn't even have a chance to struggle before Akeno shocked her with a powerful bolt of electricity. Steam came off her as she fell to the ground, landing on her head with a loud thud. Ugh. Groaned Razor's queen. Hee hee but I still have dash. Where where is it? Yufufu, did you really think I wouldn't have realized, said Akeno as she floated down towards Razor's fallen queen. She held out a small, tear-shaped bottle and grinned. That you would have a phoenix tear, that is. Akeno created electricity in her hand, destroying the tear and looked down, menacingly on Razor's queen. Don't bully my precious cow Urhe again, said Akeno before creating a magic circle in front of her. She blasted out a bolt of lightning, finally knocking out Razor's queen, and she grinned, her sadistic side obviously ecstatic. Razor Sama's queen has retired. Issei was currently outside with Kiba. Issei had left Konako with Rias and Asia and they had just heard the announcement that the enemy queen had retired. Razor will get desperate now. His remaining forces will start coming out in an all-out assault on our base, said Kiba preparing himself. Yeah. Especially while two of our members are exhausted. Let's work hard as the men of the Gremory, all right, said Issei, smiling over at Kiba. Issei, Yuato, I'm working on a surprise attack against the enemy base with Asia and Konako. I need you two to buy us as much time as you can while whittling down the enemy's forces, said Rias through the communication circle. But Bukho that's dash, began Kiba before being interrupted. Sounds good, Bukho. We'll take care of Razor's main force and meet with you when you leave the base. The final showdown is about to begin, right? Asked Issei, cracking his knuckles in anticipation. Thank you, Issei. Work hard, you too, said Rias. It's dangerous for the king to leave HQ you know, said Kiba, pouting. Then we'll just have to make sure she isn't alone, right Knight of the Gremory, said Issei, 
grinning. Kiba sighed and shook his head before nodding in agreement. The two walked out towards the track area and between the gym and the clubhouse to find a large group of Razor's servants. I shall begin. I am a knight that serves Razor Sama, Carmine. You two are brave to come out into the open. I shall be the first to face you, said a woman clad in armor. She pulled out a sword and ignited it in flames, moving into a battle stance. I am a knight who serves Rias Sama, Kiba Yuato. I look forward to this fight between knights, said Kiba as he walked forward. He manifested a dark sword with a blue tinge and moved into a battle stance. Kiba launched himself at Carmine, Carmine doing the same, and the two clashed swords against each other. Carmine attempted to overpower Kiba with her flames but was surprised by the steam that was emitted from the clashing swords. What's this? Steam, said Carmine in confusion before leaping back. This is a special sword that has the properties of water. Your fire won't have much of an effect on me, said Kiba, grinning. Then I shall beat you down with my swordsmanship, shouted Carmine before launching herself at him again. The two clashed swords many times, moving back and forth across the track. While they fought, the others of Razor's group began to move forward. Silly Carmine. Nothing in her head but swords, swords, swords. Fine, as long as she doesn't lose, I don't have a problem with her fighting him one on one, said a girl from off to the side. Issei turned to look at her and his eyes widened in surprise. Our rebel, said Issei, trying to keep his voice down. She hadn't yet introduced herself so he had to keep quiet about knowing her. She turned to him, her hair drills swaying from the motion. Hello there, little devil, said Ravel as she began to walk towards Issei. As she did so, other members from the group encircled Issei and she smiled, confidently. I'm a bit concerned over Rias Sama's taste in gentlemen. That one over there is handsome but he's a sword freak. You. On the other hand, I don't get. Not very attractive, and incredibly weak looking. I can barely even feel your aura. Honestly. Issei couldn't help but sweat drop at Ravel's unkind remarks, reminding him of how snide she was before she met him. Honestly, those two siblings were pretty terrible people before meeting Issei. I I'd like to think I've got some charm, said Issei. Maybe for a low class person like yourself you'd be average at best, said Ravel stabbing her words into Issei's poor heart. Ah, forget it, said Issei, childishly. Let's just get this over with. Eh? Oh no, I don't fight. Isabella, said Ravel, causing one of Razor's servants to come forward. A woman with a biker getup and mask came forward, causing Issei to once again sweat drop. I am Isabella, a rook of Razor-sama. Let's rumble, shouted Isabella before launching herself at Issei. She threw out several punches, all of which Issei dodged with a calm expression on his face. Too slow, said Issei under his breath, causing Isabella to growl in annoyance. Isabella, don't disappoint Ani Isama, said Ravel, seriously. Why yes, Ravel Sama, said Isabella before speeding up her assault. Ra. She sped up her assault to the point where her punches formed a wall of fists in front of her and Issei decided to see what would happen if one of those fists actually hit him. He stopped his movements in the path of one of the punches and Isabella noticed it. She put all her strength into her punch, smashing her fist into Issei's chest. There was a moment of calmness as the thud reverberated through the air. Isabella grinned in success that she managed to hit Issei but her eyes widened when he grinned back at her. She looked down at her fist and found that her knuckles were seriously misshapen. Ah, <laughs> shouted Isabella in pain as she gripped her broken hand. Issei didn't give her a moment, though before quickly blasting her away with key. Razor Sama's rook has retired. I feel kind of bad since she was in such pain before I knocked her out, said Issei, rubbing the back of his head. Issei glanced over at Kiba and just in time to see him shatter Carmen's sword. She stared in shock before gritting her teeth and putting some distance between them. Oh my, if I don't hurry up and deal with my opponent, Issei Kun is going to leave me in the dust said Kiba before transforming his sword into an odd-looking silver sword with what looked like a small black hole on one end. He held the sword up and began sucking up things around it. Ugh, how many sacred gears do you have, asked Carmine, angrily. I only have one, sword birth, said Kiba before touching the ground with his hand. Carmine sensed something was wrong and leapt away from where she was just before a dozen swords grew out of the ground. Seriously, said Carmine in shock. Hey, hey. Mr. Pawn, said Ravel, recatching Issei's attention. 
East Say turned to find Ravel pointing over towards the top of the new schoolhouse. What's that? East Say Sorius flying down to the top of the schoolhouse, carrying Asia, and being followed by Konako. Kiba, it's time to finish up, said East Say before coating his fists in a fiery key. I agree. Baku is going to be mad if we're late, said Kiba, readying his sword. You have big names in your group, Ruin Princess, Twilight Healing, Priestess of Lightning, Sword Birth, and the legendary Boosted Gear. But you all lack experience and we have a great advantage, began Ravel before lighting a fire in her hand. The power of the immortal phoenix. You can't possibly win. The other four who had surrounded Issei alongside Ravel began inching closer to Issei, who grinned in response. Come at me, said Issei, confidently. The four girls leapt at Issei, all with different attacks. Taste my sword, shouted one of the girls before slashing at Issei. He punched the blade with his key-coated hand, shattering it, and in the same motion, he kicked one of the girls with a key-coated foot, lighting her clothes on fire, and launching her away. The girl whose sword was broken had tensed up in surprise so Issei took that opportunity to grab her by the collar of her shirt and swung her around, smashing her into the other two girls who were coming at Issei. All the girls ended up flying over in Kiba's direction and Issei called out to him. Now, Kiba, shouted Issei, causing Kiba to grin. Massive sword birth, shouted Kiba before making hundreds of swords grow from the ground around him. All four girls Issei tossed over as well as the knight Kiba had been fighting were caught up, being skewered into submission. Razor Sama's three pawns, one bishop, and two knights have retired. Ugh, you're stronger than I thought, said Ravel, looking annoyed. Tereus, now, said Issei before running towards the new schoolhouse, Kiba following close behind. Your servants are better than I though, Rias, said Razor, grinning. Though your best piece, your queen, used too much of her strength earlier, didn't she? She won't be able to help you. Akeno Fukubacho doesn't need to help, said Konako as she moved into a fighting stance, her ears and tail out. Oh? And you think you can do something, said Razor before shooting a plume of fire out at the trio. Rias put up a magic circle to protect her and Asia but Konako dodged the attack and ran towards Razor, ready to attack. She came close and landed a heavy blow to his chest, enhanced with ki, but the punch went through him as he partially transformed into fire. That doesn't work on me. He blew out intense flames at Konako's body, burning her clothes and arm. Konako, shouted Rias, but she was unable to do anything as Razor blasted Konako away with his flames. Rias Sama's rook has retired. Razor, shouted Rias, angrily, before firing off a ball of destruction. Razor blew it away by fanning out his flames and he smirked. Your servants are bad, Rias. With a few years of training, they might be good servants. By then though, you'll already long have been my bride, said Razor. Uni Isama, said Ravel as she flew close to her brother with her flaming wings. It seems we're the only two left. That's fine, little sister. I can easily wipe out the rest. Observe, said Razor before pointing a finger down at Issei and Kiba who were running towards the building. Issei had just released his dragon wings to fly up to the top of the building when Razor shot a concentrated beam of fire. The fire blew past Issei at high speed and pierced Kiba through the chest. He coughed up blood as he called out in pain. Kiba! Yuato, shouted Issei and Rias, respectively. Rias Sama's knight has retired. Just resign, Rias. If you do. I'll stop hurting your precious servants, said Razor, mockingly. Who should, shouted Rias before blasting Razor in the face with a ball of destruction, taking off a chunk of his face. Don't you get it, Rias, began Razor as his wounds were engulfed in flames. You'll never be able to beat me. Razor's wounds completely healed as the flames dissipated but his grin vanished when he felt a powerful presence off to the side. He turned to see what it was but didn't even turn halfway before a fist smashed into the side of his head, launching him off the building and into the ground below with such force that he dented the ground where he landed creating a small crater. Oh Uni Isama, shouted Ravel in shock. She couldn't see Razor due to the cloud of smoke, but she did turn to see who it was that had hit her brother. Issei landed on top of the new schoolhouse, where Rias and Razor had been fighting, and breathed out a deep sigh. Ha! Huh. That felt great. Watching you do that to Kiba really pissed me off so I needed to do something of at least that level to feel better said Issei, stretching. You just who are you? Rias Sama couldn't have anyone as powerful as you, I would have known about it, said Ravel, angrily. 
That's because even Rias doesn't know just how strong I am, said Issei, grinning. Ravel stared at him, wide-eyed, and watched as he turned his head back in Razor's direction, his smile disappearing. Down in the crater, the dust cloud was dissipating and they could see Razor, most of his body covered in repairing flames. Ack, coughed out Razor as he spat out blood. You you bastard. That really freaking hurt. Ria Sony sama I don't think we need to fight anymore, said Asia. It's just a bit frustrating to know that one of my servants is so much more powerful than his master. His power is ridiculous, said Rias, biting her lip. Razor's flames slowly disappeared, all the damage now gone and he cracked his neck before glaring at Issei. You shitty low-class devil. How dare you injure me in such a way. I'm going to enjoy pummeling you into the ground, said Razor as he released his fiery wings. Issei leapt off the building as he said one word. Promotion. Issei landed on the ground, cracking it a bit as he smashed down and looked up at Razor with fire in his eyes. Queen. Issei's aura spiked again, this time due to his promotion, and he materialized his boosted gear. So you're going to use your sacred gear now, asked Razor as he moved into a battle stance. No, I'm going to use my balance breaker, shouted Issei before his armor manifested. He moved into a battle stance and coated his gauntlets in a thick layer of red key representative of his draconic powers. TCH. Why are you working so hard to interfere? Don't you know? This is to ensure the continuation of our bloodlines. To continue being pure-blooded high-class devils. Do you want to ruin our households by interfering, shouted Razor, angrily. Just let me have her dash. I'm not giving her to you, shouted Issei, interrupting Razor. She's mine. You have a problem with that. Rias blushed at hearing Issei's words but Razor just grinned, mockingly. I see, you fell for your master. Well, that's fine. I'll just have to kill you so you don't have to live with knowing you'll never be good enough for a high-class devil, shouted Razor, making his wings blaze out even more. The two launched at each other and collided, Issei's fist smashing away Razor's. Razor roared out and blew intense flames in Issei's face. Issei ignored the heat of the flames and smashed Razor in the gut blasting key right through him. Razor stumbled back and covered the hole in his stomach, now covered in flames but glared and continued to fight. He created a ball of fire in his hand condensed and added more flames to it over and over before finally blasting Issei with an inferno of flames. Issei responded by releasing more of his hidden aura, blasting the flames away. Razor looked surprised by that action but became angrily and started throwing out random attacks of flames at Issei covering the entire area Issei was in in an intense fire that would have killed anyone else. Too bad his opponent was Issei. Too weak, said Issei from inside the flames. Razor trembled when he heard that and started to take steps backwards as he heard the thumps of Issei's steps and the clanking of his armor. Issei came out of the flames, completely unscathed, and his eyes glowed bright green. I'm going to show you why you should never underestimate a dragon, shouted Issei before pointing a finger in the air. A small red dot began to form just above his finger and there was only one sound that broke the silence. Boost. The dot began to grow and the boosts kept coming, making the dot grow bigger and bigger. Boost. Boost. Boost boost boost. Boost boost. Boost. The ball of red energy was enormous, bigger than the clubhouse, and Issei removed his mask till he could look at Razor. Take this, Razor, shouted Issei before throwing his arm down. The enormous ball of energy began to come down towards Razor and he screeched in fear. Dragoon shoot. The field was engulfed in the blast but at the last second, Issei leapt up and put a powerful barrier around himself, Rias and Asia. Once the blast had subsided, there was a simple announcement. Razor Sama has retired. The king has been defeated. Rias Sama has won. Rias could only stare in shock, and a bit of fear, as she took in the destruction. Three quarters of the field had been all but decimated. The only thing that still stood was part of the clubhouse, a golden sphere visible. She realized that was a keno. She looked back to find that Ravel had hid behind the barrier Issei had put up so she hadn't been hit but she looked particularly shocked and defeated. Issei, I. Began Rias, trailing off as she didn't have words. Bukhu, 40%, said Issei, simply. What, said Rias snapped out of her shock and now in disbelief. That was 40% of my full power, said Issei, grinning at her. I, I can't talk about this right now, said Rias, too shocked to even think. All right, 
said Issei, simply, as the two looked off at the destruction. Issei POV. Rias and I were currently in the infirmary to see Konako-chan and Kiba, who had been injured by that Yakitori bastard. Asia was healing them right now, but it would take some time, especially for Kiba who had been pierced through one of his lungs. That was a delicate area for healing. WW well, it seems we underestimated you this time, Rias sama said a voice from behind us. I turned and found Ravel, looking pretty pissed that we messed up her plan. Sorry, Ravel, but I hid my power until now for a reason. Seems so, though I seem to have underestimated my servants as well. Konako and Yuato did better against Razor's servants than I had expected, said Rias, looking happy about that. True, I didn't quite expect that. You've been raising those two well, though I'm more curious about this one, said Ravel, pointing at me. Well, he's a special case. I can't tell you much about him, since I know very little myself. I hope he'll tell me at one point or another, said Rias, glaring over at me. He's quite disrespectful. Not telling his master about his past as well as proclaiming such an absurd thing in the battle, said Ravel, glaring at me. Rias blushed when Ravel brought up what I had said and looked away, staying silent. So, Ravel, how's your brother doing? I didn't want to hold back against that Yakitori, hope he isn't too hurt, I lied. If I had used even 10% more power, the retire system wouldn't have been able to save him. Humph. Uni Isama is fine, thank you very much. He's sleeping now while the phoenix power heals him. Don't get too confident, you may be strong, but you're still just a low class devil, said Ravel. Ah, I've missed seeing Ravel in Hertzinson mode. Well, when he wakes up. Tell him that I think he's a Yakitori bastard, K. I want him to know how much I respect him, I said, mockingly. Ravel let out another hoof and turned away, walking back over to where her brother and his peerage were being tended to. You know, you'll get me in trouble if you keep mouthing off to high class devils like that. I swear, if you were to talk like that to my brother, said Rias, trailing off. Anyways, East say, I was thinking about something. Hmm. I said, wondering what she was going to say. Is it about moving into my house? Well, Asia is living at your house, and I was wondering if it would be good if I moved into, guide, my newest servants, said Rias, her cheeks just a bit red. Eh? W well, I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but could, but I don't have another spare room. Would you share Asia's room? I asked, already knowing the answer. Well, yes, I'd share Asia's room though I might want to have some skinship with my precious pawn, said Rias, looking me in the eye. You uh, Saying that while looking me in the eyes with that expression is telling me you mean something more than just touching. Rias, you're too tempting and cute. I I don't have a problem with it, though you should probably talk to my parents again. They'll probably be really happy, though, I said. Rias just smiled at me in response and we turned back around to Asia as she healed the others. She looked particularly frustrated. Maybe because Rias was moving back in despite her not making any progress in our relationship? Arera, I don't like that I did so little in this fight. Only defeating the enemy queen is such a bore, said Akeno as she came to join. It's good enough, Akeno. We won in the end so everything is fine, said Rias, simply. Mm, said Akeno, pouting a bit. Some days later. Kiba was absent again, said Akeno in mock surprise. Yes. Said Rias, trailing off in thought. Currently, Rias, Akeno, Konako-chan, Asia, Valerie, and Yumi were all in the club room, myself included. Yumi had a complicated expression on her face and I knew what she was thinking. It's that, right? I asked, already knowing the answer. Yes, it's because of Kiba and Yumi's past. I've already spoken to him several times but he's bent on destroying the pieces of Excalibur, said Rias irritated. I think he's more interested in killing the ones who did this in the first place, I said. Well that's obvious, but why do you think that's more important, asked Rias, curious. Because I have this, I said before pulling Excalibur rapidly from my separate space and stabbing it into the wooden floor below. Rias looked at it in shock, most of the devils in the room tensing at the powerful holy energy. I've already shown it to Kiba, Akeno and Konako-chan included. Kiba was obviously angry but he didn't say anything and he didn't ask me to give it to him. How did you get that? asked Rias, glaring. I stole it when I attacked the facility. I thought it would be better than letting the priests there use it against me. 
Unfortunately, it didn't make as much a difference as I had hoped. My ability to wield it has something to do with the fact that I'm Ascalon's user Burr I don't really understand it well, I explained. Put it away, ordered Rius, causing me to put the sword away in a bit of a panic. The church is still looking for lost holy swords. Taking it out could cause problems and bring exorcists here to retrieve it. Please be more careful. Ah, sorry, I didn't think about that. I said, rubbing the back of my neck. I didn't really think about it but they did track Freed down to here in Kyog because he was using an Excalibur. Sigh anyways, aside from the endless surprises you keep giving me, I'll have to have another talk with you Uto, though I can't be as understanding with him this time. He's going to get himself killed if he keeps being reckless, said Rias, worried. I'll talk to Kiba, too. After all, we think of each other as siblings. I'm sure he'll listen to me, said Yumi. Yes, I believe he will. I'll let you know when I plan to talk to him again, said Rias, receiving a nod from Yumi. All right, you all can go ahead and deal with your duties and you all can go home. Yes Baku, said everyone minus Yumi and Valerie. Later on. I was currently out, in the middle of the night, called out by one of my contracts. So, Sensei, what did you call me out for? I asked, suspicious. Azazel Sensei was wearing a yukata and had called me out to walk along a path in a peaceful garden area. Nothing much, nothing much. I was just curious to see how things are coming along. It's been a while now since you came back. I heard what happened in your fight with Razor. You went pretty hard on him, don't you think? asked Azazel Sensei. Well, I needed to make him fear dragons like last time so that he would become a better person again. I also needed to show Ravel my cool side otherwise she might not become interested in talking to me later. I want to try and get everyone back to the way they were before, it's just that this time I have to do it differently, I explained, looking off at the stars. Ah, you're too young to be worrying about complicated stuff like that. I guess you'll have to, though. At least for now. I can't exactly help you until the alliance is formed otherwise it might be suspicious. After all, the governor of the Grigori helping both the red and white dragons? Sounds a little suspicious don't you think, said Azazel Sensei, grinning at me. I know, I know. How are we going to deal with Kakabile this time? It's about time for him to show his stupid face, I said, annoyed. I really hated that battle-crazed fallen angel. He was probably one of the worst major enemies I faced. I still plan to punish him with eternal freezing but it's up to you if you want to rough him up or not. I'll wait until the opportune time, said Azazel Sensei, making me smile. He was basically giving me free reign to do as I pleased. Good. Was that all? I asked, curious. Can't a man take a relaxing walk with his student, asked Sensei, grinning at me. I grinned back, well it would be nice to just relax a bit. Later on. Tonight is the night when Irina-san and Zenovia-san come, right ISE-san, asked Asia as we walked home after our nightly duties. Yeah. We should feel the holy energy in, 5, 4, 3, 2, there it is, I said, feeling the unsettling holy energy. Since every Excalibur's energy is different, any of the other Excalibur's makes my skin crawl. We walked over to and inside my house, finding that the light in the sitting room was on. And this was when he won his first martial arts trophy, oh I remember he got that nosebleed all over his GI, said mom, probably going through another photo album. We walked in to find Irina and Zenovia dressed in their black bodysuits and a white cloak over top. Off to the side was Zenovia's Excalibur, Excalibur Destruction. Mom. I said as we came in. Oh? Ease say, you're home. Say hello to our guests, said mom as she put away the photo album. Hey hey ise kun. Do you remember me, asked Irina, happily. Of course, you're Irina, right? You're really different from back then, I said, playing along. She was such a tomboy as a child, it was no wonder you two got along so well, said mom, getting lost in the memories. Hehehe. <laughs> well, I'm glad you remember me, ise kun. A lot has changed and you never know what surprises you'll find, said Irina, her words hiding what she really meant. I knew she knew Asia and I were devils, but she didn't know I also knew exactly who and what she and Zenovia were. Yeah. I said, slightly awkward. Well, we should probably head out for tonight. It's getting kind of late, said Irina, feeling more than seeing the glares Zenovia was shooting at me. Oh, please come and visit again before you leave. 
It's so good having you back and we have so much to catch up on, said mom before giving Irina a hug goodbye. Don't worry, we'll be back soon, promise. Bye ise kun, see you soon, said Irina, smiling and waving as she and Zenovia left. What kind of situation is this going to turn into? A little while after Irina and Zenovia left the house, Rias came in in a panic. Are you both alright, asked Rias, her breathing ragged as she ran to us and looked us over. Yes, Rias Onisama, said Asia, smiling over at Rias. Her smile seemed to reassure Rias who calmed down a bit before throwing herself at us in a hug. I was so worried. The spells I placed on the house went off signaling an incredibly powerful holy energy. I had thought the worst, even though I know how strong Issei is. What happened? Who was it? asked Rias, still hugging us. A childhood friend of mine and another woman. They were both wielding Excalibur. My childhood friend came by to visit, she seemed to know we were devils but she wouldn't have done anything in front of mom, I explained. Two? I'm glad you are both safe. Although you could protect yourself, Asia might have fallen victim. I should have gotten here sooner, said Rias, pulling away to look at us. We're fine, Onisama. Ise San would have protected me, said Asia, smiling again. Sai I just want to know what they're doing in my territory. I hope they're not causing trouble. I'll have to finish my conversation with Sana to find out what we want to do about them, said Rias, now looking annoyed. Well, you two don't need to worry about it. Let's go to bed and deal with it in the morning. Yes, Baku. Asia and I said in unison, looking forward to seeing Irina and Zenovia again the next day. The next day. I was on my way to the club room, leaving later than the others who were on their way over. I walked up the stairs and felt the holy energy of the two Excalibur getting closer. I entered the club room to find everyone there minus Valerie and Yumi who stayed home. Good, so we're all here, said Rias who was at her desk with a serious expression. I looked over to find Zenovia and Irina sitting on one of the couches, Irina with her hood down. She waved at me with a smile. Behind her, against the wall, Kiba was glaring over at Zenovia's sword with a fierce expression that I hadn't seen in a while. So, I guess I'll start, began Irina, looking towards Rias. Recently, the Excaliburs held by the Catholic Church HQ, the Vatican, the Protestant Church, and Eastern Orthodox Church were stolen. Which ones were stolen, I asked, curious since this time I owned Excalibur rapidly. That's none of your business, said Zenovia in a harsh tone. Sorry, Ise Khan, but we can't tell you that. I don't mind telling you about my Excalibur, though, said Irina, smiling, as she untied a rope around her waist. She held the rope at arm's length and it morphed into a slender sword. It's called Excalibur Mimic. It can transform into anything I want so it's easy to travel with, unlike my partners. Irina, should you be telling these devils the ability of your sword, asked Zenovia, sounding annoyed. Era, Zenovia, even if they are devils we still have to form a trustworthy relationship with them. Especially in this situation. Either ways, none of the devils here feel strong enough that revealing my sword's abilities would make me fall behind, said Irina, sounding cocky. So, what do the stolen holy swords have to do with us or this far eastern country, asked Rias with attitude. The Catholic Church was in possession of two Excalibur including mine, the Protestant Church had two including Irina's, and the Eastern Orthodox Church had one. One went missing in the previous war while another was lost during the attack on the Holy Sword project some years back, explained Zenovia. One sword was stolen from each church and the thief fled to Japan. We've tracked him to this town for reasons we don't know. Sai why must my territory be so full of incidents? Anyways, do you know who stole them, asked Rias. The Fallen Angel Organization, the Grigori, said Zenovia, simply. Rias' eyes widened and she gawked. The Grigori? That's strange, but if anyone would steal them, the Grigori would be the thieves. The Excalibur don't interest the higher-ups on the devil's side, said Rias, going into thought. We know the main culprit, too. Cockabile, continued Zenovia. Cockabile, so that warmongering cotter of the Grigori is behind this. I never expected to hear the name of someone who appeared in the Bible, said Rias, still in thought. We've been trying to get the swords back for a while now but all our priests and exorcists keep getting killed. They've finally sent us in as a last resort, explained Zenovia. And you're here for what? Cooperation, asked Rias, curious. Our request, no, 
the order we were given was to not allow any devils to intrude in the conflict between us and the fallen angels. In other words, we're here to tell you not to interfere, said Zenovia, bluntly. Ah, I forgot how blunt Zenovia was. Rias is going to be pissed. Such rudeness. Didn't they teach you how to speak to those you're asking something from? And what is this? Do the higher-ups on your side think we'd collaborate with those fallen angels? Perhaps we might team up with them and use the Excalibur for our own purposes, said Rias, angrily. Our higher-ups think that that's not impossible, said Zenovia. Rias was pissed now. The aura around her was getting stronger and her eyes said that they better choose their next words carefully. If it comes down to it, we'll destroy you, too. Even if you are the sister of Amu, said Zenovia, not backing down. If you know that much then let me tell you something, I will never side with the fallen angels. I swear it on the name Grammary to never do anything that would humiliate the Mu, said Rias, seriously. Glad to hear it. Our HQ would be, too. I didn't believe that the sister of Amu would be so foolish as to side with them, said Zenovia. You do know, however, that I have no intention to side with your side either, correct, said Rias, calmer than before. Of course, we just want a pledge of non-intervention, said Irina, smiling. Understood, said Rias, the two church girls getting up after hearing her. Thank you for your time. We shouldn't stay longer, lest some believe we're getting too friendly with devils, said Zenovia. True, good luck, said Rias before the two girls began to leave. As they were leaving, Zenovia glanced over at Asia and I was reminded of this irritating part. Asia frowned, remembering it too. This was a darker part of the relationship between Zenovia and Asia. I've been wondering since we visited the house of Hayudu Isse but, aren't you the witch Asia Argento, asked Zenovia, irritating me. Even if it's Zenovia who doesn't remember yet, it pisses me off when people talk about Asia like that. Yeah, said Asia, pretending to be surprised. Eh? Isn't she the ex-nun who was exiled for healing a devil? I thought it was bad what you did but I never thought you'd become a devil, said Irina, surprised. To think that a strong believer became a devil. Do you even still have faith, asked Zenovia. Asia's eyes became a bit glassy as she remembered how she felt at that moment and Zenovia's eyes widened a bit. You do? Then, please allow me to cut you down now. I'm sure that our lord will forgive you if you repent in purgatory. Zenovia unwrapped her sword and pointed it towards Asia. Oi, oi, Zenovia, you really were a bitch before you came to our side, you know? That's enough. I won't allow my servants to be belittled, said Rias, getting up from the couch. I'm not belittling her. As a person of faith, it's my duty to dash, began Zenovia before being cut off by me. I shuffled past Konako-chan, quickly and stood in front of Asia and Zenovia. Isse dash, began Rias, but I cut her off, too. Don't threaten Asia, I said, simply, but with some killing intent backing it. I wasn't threatening her, only offering relief from her guilt, said Zenovia, smiling at me. A person who talks about killing someone, for any reason, shouldn't be smiling about it, I said, darkly, causing Zenovia's smile to disappear. What do you plan to do about it, asked Zenovia this. Amzer. I shouted, everyone in the room except Zenovia and I disappearing. What is this, asked Zenovia, looking around. I created a special space separate from where we were. Everything in here is a copy of the club room. The only difference is that time doesn't move while we're in here, I said, simply. It's an interesting spell I learned because I thought it might come in handy for talking in weird situations. I can't keep it up for more than a few minutes, though. Stopping time. I've only ever heard of pagan gods doing such a thing. Who are you really? asked Zenovia, moving into a fighting stance. No one important. Ah, please brace yourself. Unlike gods and Mu, I can't keep these spaces open without some trouble. Although they have trouble when they keep it open for more than 10 minutes at a time, well whatever. I have to release the seals on my power so I can be at 100% to keep this space open for the 3 minutes that I can manage, I explained. I want to talk to you about something. What could you possibly dash, began Zenovia before buckling to her knees as I released my full power. The space shook a bit but everything was relatively stable. Zenovia's reaction was normal for someone who wasn't expecting it. I think that when I was still in the original timeline, if Sertsk Sama had done the same I would have reacted similarly. So? I asked. S so, what? 
Do you want me to tell you what I think of your power? Asked Zenovia, annoyed. Eh? Ah, no, I'm not some kind of bastard with a huge ego like some others that I know. I just wanted to know if you'll listen willingly now, I said, smiling. Zenovia nodded, hesitantly, but kept her fierce eyes on me. Good. To begin with, I lied a little bit before, I'm the Sekar Uti, Drake says I'm nearly the strongest. T the Sekar Uti? You mean the Red Dragon? So your incredible power is that of a dragon's. Said Zenovia before drifting. Her eyes focused and unfocused weirdly and I was a little concerned. Zenovia? Are you A.L. Arga? I began before feeling a piercing headache. Eh? She recovered her memory from something like my being the Sekar Uti? Or was it because I'm strong? I know Zenovia originally liked me because she wanted to make strong dragon babies but this is ridiculous. Ah, my head, East say, what is going on? Where are we? asked Zenovia, sounding confused. Eh? Back in the club room. What is the last thing you remember, Zenovia? I asked. Well, I remember being off on a mission with Irina and Rossius and Gasper while you and the other club members went to deal with your mid-class promotion exams. After that, it seems like I had a bit of a reset. I remember memories that should be older than the ones I mentioned but they seem, newer. My most recent memory is that terrible memory of those nasty things I said to Asia, explains Zenovia, frowning now. So, after the promotion exam, we were attacked by Shulba who was still alive. He used a powerful anti-dragon poison and I died. Afiz helped me and went back in time and put my soul in my younger self's body and I've been training ever since. I accidentally triggered your old memories so now you have them back, I explained. I I think I understand but, you died? By that bastard Shulba, asked Zenovia, her eyes a mix between fury and grief. I'm alright now, Zenovia, so don't worry about it, I said putting a hand on her shoulder. She smiled at me with a softer expression than I expected from her and she began to stand back up. This incredible power I feel from you must be the results of your training, said Zenovia, grinning at me. Our babies are going to be strong. So I can't believe those kinds of thoughts are probably what triggered it. Anyways, this space is almost expired, when we get back, events should happen the same way as before, though we don't need to spar now that we reached an understanding. You and Irina can just leave normally, I explained before making some magic circles appear all over me. What are those for, asked Zenovia. To reseal my power. I'm trying to keep it mostly under wraps until a majority of the club members get their memories back, I said. Zenovia nodded and I reseled my power before breaking the space. Time resumed right from where it had stopped, though Zenovia and I were in different positions, confusing most there. say, did you do something, asked Rias, suspicious. Nothing bad. Zenovia wants to leave now, though, I lied, trying to be smooth about it. Rhea sighed me suspiciously but let it go as Zenovia turned to leave. Come on, Irina. We should begin our search, said Zenovia, receiving a nod from Irina. Bye again, Ise Kun. See you soon, said Irina, waving as the two girls left. After they were gone, Rhea sighed and leaned back in her chair, taking in what they had told her as well as having an irritated expression from my not telling her what I did. After a few minutes, Kiba clicked his teeth and began walking towards the door. Rias didn't react immediately, but when she caught a glimpse of Kiba's face, she stood up. Yuato, wait. I will not allow you to leave the club room right now. You are the Grammary household's knight, said Rias, sternly. Kiba stopped and was silent for a moment but he didn't turn back to Rias. Bukha, I'm sorry, said Kiba, bluntly, before walking out. Yuato, shouted Rias after him. After he had slammed the door behind him, Rhea's expression became complicated and she chewed on one of her thumbnails. After a moment of silence, she put on a somber expression. Yuato, you still can't. I looked at Rhea's and I frowned. I'll have to give Kiba a good knock to the head for making Rhea's worry so much about him. The next day. Oi, oi, are you insane, said Saji, getting up prepared to leave. I grabbed him by the arm and put on a pleading look. Please, please. Just listen. Listen and if I can't convince you, you can go, okay. I pleaded. He looked conflicted but he sat back down. I'm already getting the shivers thinking of what Kaika would do to me if she found out I got involved with holy swords. On top of that, I don't like that blonde Bishounen that captures all the girls' hearts, shouted Saji, 
grudgingly. I know, I know, but please just help me destroy it. It would help a lot, I'm begging here, I said, lying a bit. I did need Saji's help. Before I got strong as hell. But, Saji and I become friends after this incident and I'd like to continue that. Destroy it. Hell no. Kaika would murder me if I helped in something like that, you know. Your master is strict but she shows her soft side to you guys, while my master is a nice cold strict woman. I'm out of here, said Saji before jumping to his feet and trying to run away. Just like last time, Konako-chan caught Saji as he ran past her table. Ise Senpai thinks of strange things, said Konako-chan before taking a bite of her giant sundae. She and Saji came back to the table I was at and I explained to Saji the reason I wanted to do this, also telling him about Kiba's background. By the end of it, Saji was crying like a baby just like last time. Sniff you uh. Kiba, I didn't know you suffered like that in your past. I can forgive your lady killerness this time to help you with your suffering. I promise I'll be kind to you this one time, said Saji in tears. That's nice, but you know Kiba isn't here, right? I asked, sweat dropping. Honestly, why are all my male friends so weird? I'm almost glad I didn't bring Matsuda and Motohama back into this insane life of mine. Ise Senpai, Zenovia Senpai is in that situation, right? Will we find them the same way, asked Konako-chan, whispering enough that the sobbing Saji couldn't hear her. Ah, don't worry. I can use a communications magic circle. Since Zenovia has a hood on, Irina shouldn't see it, I said, before activating one next to my ear. I was right, though Zenovia did say it surprised her. We agreed to meet at the same family restaurant in Konako-chan and I dragged Saji along. He finally stopped crying halfway there. Now then, said Zenovia, acting like before. I know you didn't treat us for nothing. What do you want? Ah, I feel violated to have been treated to food by a devil. Even if he is my childhood friend, I wonder if the Lord would forgive me, said Irina, partly to herself, while she prayed. We want to help you destroy an Excalibur, I said simply. Zenovia didn't react, though Irina snapped out of her prayer in surprise. Eh, she said. Is it about the one who was glaring at us the whole time we were negotiating, asked Zenovia, continuing to play along for Irina's sake. Yes. Kiba was one of the victims of the Holy Sword Project, I said. Eh? That guy was. His hate for Excalibur must be deep then. If it wasn't for the Red Liberator Dragon, who knows how much longer those terrible experiments would have gone on, said Irina, causing my mouth to stretch out in a straight line. I remembered the incident when I earned that nickname from the church. I hadn't explained what happened to anyone who recovered their memories since I've come back. I'm sorry Kiba and Yumi for not being able to save you and all of your friends that time. So, what's the plan? Do you think him destroying one will do anything, asked Zenovia. Well, I figure at least destroying one will ease his conscience at least a little, I said, simply. After a moment, Zenovia gave me a small half smile. All right, that's fine, said Zenovia, receiving an F from Irina. Irina, our mission is to keep the Excalibur from remaining in the hands of the fallen angels. I know that, Zenovia, but should we really let these guys participate? I feel bad for their friend but not enough that I think they should dash, said Irina before Zenovia cut her off. Irina, with one of the Cotter as our enemy, we have a 30% of surviving this after completing our mission, even with our backup plan. Plus, your childhood friend is involved. I thought you'd be want to be with him more, even if he has become a devil, said Zenovia. Ah, well, I do want to catch up with Ise Kun but are you sure? We're not supposed to work with the devils, said Irina, concerned. But we're not teaming up with the devils. You guys are just a few that have gone against your master's orders to help your own, right? Asked Zenovia, grinning at us. Yeah. Our masters are gonna be mad when they find out what we're doing, I said, smiling back. Irina seemed to be at a loss for what to say so she simply pouted and leaned back in the booth. So, if we're agreed, let's find Kiba and tell him about the plan. Ah, and if you guys know anything about the ones running that insane project, telling him might be good to take his anger away from your Excalibur. He probably hates the one who ran the project more than the swords themselves. M.M., said Zenovia in response before we left the restaurant. It's been a couple days now since we met with Zenovia and Irina and then convinced Kiba. We were presently walking out in the night, we consisting of me, Kiba, Konako-chan, and Saji. 
We were dressed as priests, Konakochan is a nun, and were hoping to catch Freed's attention. Since he was out killing priests sent by the church to recover the Excalibur, he would be looking out for those dressed as holy men. Konakochan and I already knew how this was going to play out and followed Kiba to the abandoned factory where I defeated that rogue devil. Stop, said Kiba, seriously, while putting out a hand. His eyes squinted before looking straight up and manifesting a demonic sword. Here he comes. We looked up and saw the crazed rogue exorcist leap off the top of the factory. Hiya ha 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 ha. Looky here, some shitty priests, shouted Freed as he pulled out his Excalibur. Die for me, K. He swung his sword down on Kiba, but Kiba deflected his attack, launching Freed away from him. Freed landed on a walkway cover nearby, grinning while licking his lips like a crazy person. Oh ho ho ho. It's that freaking kid from the other day. And what's this? The midget and the shitty devil that caused me so much annoyance before. Tell me, how is that retarded nun, asked Freed, glaring over at me, specifically. And here I thought I'd just be hunting priests all night. Oh, how wonderful that would have been. Ah, but don't get me wrong, killing some shitty devils will still give me a rush. Yuato senpai, careful, said Konako-chan as she moved into a fighting stance. I know, said Kiba, glaring at Freed. I'll contact Zenovia and Irina, I said, a magic circle appearing by my ear. Make no mistake, Freed, I'm your only opponent, said Kiba before launching himself upward. Kiba, shouted Saji, sounding concerned. He looked over at me and could see my focused eyes keeping track of Kiba's movements. If Kiba gets in trouble, I'll step in, but I'd like to leave him to it for now. Zenovia, I said after my magic circle connected. We found Freed. He's wielding Excalibur Blessing. It would probably help him exorcise us so we will try to deal with him quickly. Got it. Irina and I will come to where you are now, said Zenovia from the other side. I hung up the communications circle after that and watched the fight between Kiba and Freed. Since Freed didn't have Excalibur rapidly but instead Excalibur Blessing which had been a lost Excalibur fragment in the original timeline until Heaven found it later on, he wasn't going to be able to keep up with Kiba's speed as well as last time. Kiba won't be able to defeat him, though, if he keeps carrying the weight of all of those at that cursed church. That guy's speed is a problem, right, began Saji after watching the fight for a minute or two. After all, Kiba is a knight, so he should have an advantage in speed. I can slow him down. You can. I asked, pretending not to know anything. Saji nodded and yelled out, absorption line, before his sacred gear manifested on his hand. He shot out a glowing line that wrapped around Freed's ankle, knocking him down. What the fuck is this, said Freed before trying to cut it with the Excalibur. Are you shitting me? I can't cut it. Shit, it must be a dragon-based sacred gear. Ha ha. Yes, you won't be able to cut my line so easily. And while you struggle, I'll suck away all your energy, shouted Saji, confidently. Although I did not want any help, it's too late now. Thank you, Saji said Kiba before stabbing his sword into the roof of the factory where he and Freed were fighting. Sard birth. Sards grew out of the ground, getting closer and closer to Freed. In a panic, Freed slashed away at the swords, trying to keep from getting skewered, but you could see that Saji was sapping a lot of his energy. Sard birth. Said a voice from one of the doorways at the front of the building. Who's there? shouted Kiba, getting defensive and stopping his sword birth. An old man wearing a priest getup came out on the front of the factory, ignoring Kiba's question and walking towards Freed. Freed, it seems that you still haven't mastered the Holy Sword's power if you are struggling against such a low-level sacred gear, said the man. Oh, if it isn't old man Valper. Won't you give me some tips to help me slaughter these fucking devils, asked Freed, looking irritated. Valper? As in, Valper Galilee, shouted Kiba, fire burning in his eyes. Indeed I am though I don't know or care who you are, said Valper, causing Kiba's expression to become even angrier. Freed, if you concentrate your will into the blade, you should be able to cut that sacred gear like butter. Oh, said Freed before doing just that. The power of the holy sword increased and he easily cut Saji's absorption line just as told. I see, I see. This thing is pretty fucking cool, isn't it? TCH, said Kiba before pulling his blade out of the ground. Freed grinned at him and leapt at him, laughing maniacally. Just before their blades clashed, Zenovia appeared in between them and blocked Freed's blade, surprising Kiba. Eh. 
Who the hell are you? asked Freed as he increased his Excalibur's power. Zenovia pushed back against his sword, glaring. Rebels Freed Selzin, Valper Galilei, both of you shall be punished in the name of our lord, shouted Zenovia, pushing back against Freed harder. You bitch. Don't you blurt out shitty words like that in front of me, shouted Freed, angrily. Before anything could progress between their fight, Keeble leapt in and swiped at Freed who just narrowly escaped it and leapt back. He landed on the ground next to Valper. Freed, began Valper causing Freed to glance over at him. Your mission was to kill any priests who came around, but the situation has changed. Two experienced Excalibur wielders isn't something you can handle yet. Okie dokie, old man. We'll go for now, then, said Freed before pulling a button off his jacket. He threw it down, causing a bright flash of light. I saw through it using key, only squinting at the bright light, and watched the direction they went. Once the light was gone, Kiba and Zenovia clicked their teeth in sync. Irina, we have to go after them, said Zenovia before running off, Kiba running alongside them. Let's go, I said to Konako-chan and Saji. I created an illusion behind us so the arriving Rias and Sonikaika wouldn't notice us as we left, and we chased after the three who left. We lost track of the group after some time since Konako-chan and I hadn't actually experienced the route they had taken. I asked Saji to return and gave him a story to tell Sonikaiku in hopes that he wouldn't have to suffer. Konako-chan decided to go back as well, since both of us missing classes that morning would have been suspicious. I stopped along the way and used key to scan the town for them. Since I had never really gotten used to tracking Kiba, Zenovia, or Irina's energy up until now, I had a particularly hard time. I should probably get used to their energies so I can track them better. It's going to end up being important later on. It was almost sunset when I finally felt a familiar energy. Irina's. I ran across the rooftops, hiding myself with magic, and made it to a dirt path on the outskirts of town. Irina laid unconscious on the ground, injured, and I looked over her with concern. I created a magic circle by my ear and called Rias. Hello, said Rias, wondering who it could be. Bukho, it's me, I said, prepared for a tongue lashing. Issa, what are you doing not only missing classes but the club meeting? You worried me, you know? Akeno didn't know anything and Konako didn't know where you were, said Rias, sounding worried. Sorry, Bukho, I was keeping an eye on our visitors. Irina, the one that is my childhood friend is here where I am, unconscious and injured. Can you please come with Asia to heal her? I asked. Issa, you know I can't. Began Rias. I knew she didn't want to help. Time to bring out the big guns. Bukho, at some point Kiba got involved. The one behind the Holy Sword project appeared and he lost it and went after them. I lost track of him and Zenovia, I explained. What? Yuato did. We'll be there in five minutes. I won't stay out of this any longer if that person is involved, said Rias. I responded with a simple okay and hung up the magic circle. Within the five minutes, she arrived by magic circle just like she said, brining Konako-chan, Akeno, and Asia along with her. Asia, I said, causing Asia to run over. She began healing Irina, looking over her friend worriedly, though hiding it from Rias. Ise kun said Irina after a moment of healing. Irina, where are Kiba and Zenovia? Who did this to you? I asked, already knowing the answer. They, escaped, we underestimated, his strength. Began Irina. Whose strength? I asked. Be careful, Ise, Kun, said Irina before passing out again. My lips formed a line on my face in annoyance. No matter how much time passes, I'll always be the same. I can't watch my comrades be in pain or suffer. While Asia continued to heal Irina's injuries, Sonikaiko, Tsubaki san, and Saji appeared via magic circle. Is she alright? asked Sonikaiku after running up to us and looking over Irina. Ive healed her but twilight healing can't restore her energy, said Asia as she finished healing the last wound. We have equipment in our base to help her. Tsubaki, please take her, said Sonikaiku. Tsubaki san nodded and picked up Irina before disappearing through a magic circle. Where did Kiba and Zenovia go then, asked Saji, walking up to me. I'm not sure, I lost track of them. Irina didn't know either, I said, thinking. It was around here, wasn't it? Where we first met Kakabile. That isn't good then. What do you plan to do, Rias, asked Sonikaiko. Before Rias could respond, 
we felt a powerful holy energy suddenly appear from the trees next to us and a familiar face walked out. Freed. I shouted, annoyed by his ugly face. He he he. So nice to see you all again. Era? Oh look. It's Asia Chan, that fucking girl ended up becoming a shitty devil, too. I'll get so much fun from killing her now, shouted Freed, crazily. Rias and Sonikaika held up their hands and created large magic circles, aimed at him. Eh? Wait, wait, wait. I'm not here to fight, yet. I have a message, from Boss Chan. What is it? asked Rias, glaring. Freed simply grinned and pointed upward, causing us to look up just as the sky morphed. A separate space. I said. And the fallen angel who created it, said Rias, seriously, bringing my attention to a single fallen angel in the sky. And it's not just any fallen angel, but one who has ten wings. He's Cotter class, said Sonikaiko, glaring up at him. I believe this is our first encounter, daughter of the Gremory, said the fallen angel. My name is Cockabile. Damn, I had forgotten how crazed Cockabile looked with his glowing red eyes and shark teeth. Good day, Mr. Cotter level fallen angel, my name is Rias Gremory. To what do I owe the pleasure, asked Rias. Such a beauty you are. A crimson haired one at that. Ugh, you and your brother are such an eyesore, I want to puke, said Cockabile. Your disgust aside, for what reason have you come to visit us? You with your high status, said Rias, her annoyance visible on her face. I was just thinking of going all out in this city, your stronghold, that QA Academy, being at the center of it all, said Cockabile, simply. Our stronghold? Why, said Rias in surprise. If I can destroy his sister's precious base of operations, maybe even kill a few of your servants, even that Sertsk would be forced to take action. I've missed war so much, you know, said Cockabile, grinning down at us. That would just spark out a war among the three powers all over again, said Rias, glaring at him. Ahaha, well, I thought the church would have tried a little harder after I stole the Excalibur, but all they sent were a few exorcists and a couple Excalibur wielders. Too dull if you ask me. I wanted something a little more exciting, explained Cockabile. You're just as warmongering as the stories tell, said Sonikaiko, adjusting her glasses. Hee <laughs> hee, well, it just got so damn boring after the last war ended, I wanted to spice things up. With Azazel and Shemhazai being against war, you see the lengths I have to take, said Cockabile. You're a complete war freak, said Rias, angrily. Thank you for the compliment. Honestly, though, bringing the devils in would be so easy. After all, Rias Gremory, sister of the current Lucifer and Sana Citri, sister of the current Leviathan, are here using the same place as a base. All I'd have to do is destroy that and it's sure to cause ripples all the way back to the underworld. If not, killing you too would, said Cockabile before letting out a power laugh. Hiya ha ha ha. This is why I love this boss Chan. He's just as war crazy as I am. Ha 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 ha, laughed Freed, shaking in anticipation. Now then, to begin the war, shouted Cockabile before creating a flash of light in the sky, bright enough that even I had trouble. When we could see again, he and Freed were gone. They've probably gone to the academy, said Sonikaiko. Let's go, said Rias, before creating a magic circle below us.